we all live in the age of um, some greater challenges to us all. Uh, the age when uh, uh, circumstances that everybody encounters that uh, uh, doesn't allow uh, ourselves to step back and think what is actually going um, with our lives, in our lives, in our social circles, or in the more usually experienced lack you know, of social stimulation, social circles, of our usual uh, urban Twitter, Facebook, um, uh, whatever news portals or whatever news groups or whatever thing uh, induced loneliness. And uh, one of the most annoying things that uh, I, I as a, a pedagogian, as, a, as an academic teacher, encounter in nowadays public discourse is uh, overestimation of powers of education and uh, uh, presentation of education, especially formal education, yes, as a kind of uh, magic bullet that will solve the, and empower you, dear young ones, to everything that is uh, possible in your life. That will open some kind of grandiose and narcissist uh, uh, perspective, that you will achieve everything, you know, like uh, some odd Hollywood uh, actor um, uh, is uh, screaming into a YouTube video, just do it, you will do it, you can, and stuff like this. I remember this also from the early uh, post-Soviet, early capitalist here, 90s, where uh, first, um, uh, yeah, it was a Nike, I guess, advertising emerged on our TV screens, you know, for me it was um, an eye-opener. Um, and someone uh, running with uh, Nike shoes was uh, screaming, if you really want, you can. So um, I was uh, really religiously believing in this. Uh, and I was thinking, you know, at the, in the early 90s, I was, you know, 19, uh, in my late teens, in my early 20s, and I thought, yeah, Wonderful, let's do this. I really want to do that, and I hope to achieve something. Um, I'm, you know, I'm young, you know, the world is changing. Uh, Francis Fukuyama, if anybody knows this name, was saying that history is beginning to, and uh, approaching its end, and it will be a uh, uh, hugely comfortable, technologically, you know, sassy, blitzy, glitzy, uh, and uh, socially friendly, um, uh, hyper-capitalist, hyper-liberal world when we, everybody will be themselves in a series of successes, you know. But, okay, um, as longer I was living in the 90s and especially, you know, in uh, this uh, century, the beginning of this century, I began to notice some discrepancies between this uh, Nike uh, proclamation and reality. And not only for myself, you know, I, I, of course we can always denigrate ourselves. We can say, all right, I mean, I am just maybe too stupid for this or that. Or, you know, if I would really try a little bit more, yes, I would, uh, yes, I would make more uh, bucks per hour, uh, euros that I don't know. I mean, or uh, really would get this job, but I'm too lazy, I must educate, I must, I must educate myself, I must discipline myself, yes, I must um, uh, get an education that will empower me to compete and to be uh, with the same speed as markets are, and those markets are damn uh, pretty fast, no, my god, I mean, uh, but I suggest a different approach, uh, not only me, but uh, many these, uh, these times, uh, there is a movement emerging uh, uh, which I was surprised to find out uh, about uh, on all those internets, which is called modern stoicism. And uh, modern stoicism always, um, uh, of course, um, uh, emphasizes its continuity with 
ancient, ancient Greek and ancient Roman Stoicism as a school of thought, as a discipline of thought, as a practical philosophy. Um, we could also, in, in nowadays terms, uh, call it maybe uh, autotherapy, autotherapeutic approach. Uh, and uh, uh, this ancient Stoicism was always declaring that it's a form of education. And to be a Stoic is to educate yourself. So my suggestion today to you, try out Stoic education. Because, uh, as you will see, it is not so expensive uh, to get. And it's quite liberating. So, uh, my recipe for you, uh, my dear colleagues uh, and friends, is to get uh, a Stoic education. But you will say, ah, okay, just another uh, self-proclaimed guru of some uh, ancient bookish bullshit, you know, uh, when we have libraries full of, you know, uh, maybe half of libraries, uh, co commercial bookstores, yes, are filled with self-help literature, you know, achieve this, be that, sell Ferrari, be a Ferrari. Uh, so, what is this funny business with some uh, ancient Roman or Greek, or whatever, uh, school of thought, whether the guys also bearded like me, but dressed in a kind of funny, I don't know, uh, uh, underclothing, you know, uh, running around and what, uh, having time and leisure not to do anything, you know? Mm, uh, but no, um, um, actually Stoicism, and the reasons for, uh, again, going back to Stoicism, or studying Stoicism as a way of life, uh, run much deeper, and they are uh, much more akin to the uh, frustrations, to the distress, to the life crises that uh, ancient people had when the ancient worlds, like Greek or Roman, Greek Hellenistic or Roman imperial worlds were dissipating, you know, meeting their uh, organizational, social, economic uh, crises. And of course, uh, you know, we don't need to know that we live with yourself, uh, with uh, ourselves, uh, in a crisis situation. Uh, it's not only 2008 that introduced this perspective. No, we st are still uh, with this. Uh, first, I would say, um, uh, let us look what is happening uh, with uh, ourselves and with others. Um, the situations we, we, we are finding ourselves uh, every day um, and not only ourselves, but others as well, uh, is a constant challenge to change yourself, yeah? to get better, to get more productive, to get more creative, to get on time, to produce this, to learn this, to learn that, <sighs> to have a never-ending list you know, of things to do, and in the end, even uh, evoke in ourselves some kind of romantic genius, you know, to become uh, something that you are not knowing that you are. To constantly reinvent himself, uh, himself, herself, myself, yourself. Uh, so this um, and, um, overloaded change yes, of our psyches, of our mental life, uh, that is being demanded by uh, present-day market institutions and also all the administrational institutions that are following the market institutions. Yes, the bureaucracy of states are following um, uh, big businesses in this. They demand us from it. Yeah? We must redefine ourselves. But this redefinition, this constant redefinition, constant drive to productivity is a very tiring thing. I don't know, uh, perhaps we are not only entering the so-called Anthropocene, the, um, uh, as geologists uh, recently concluded, the age of human-induced uh, global warming, but also we are entering the age of uh, okay, human self-induced total uh, misery, you know, psychologically and socially as well, because we don't know anymore whom to be. You know, it's, uh, so many op options, so many uh, demands uh, whom to be. So this is certainly a, 
uh, very real experiential um, suffering that we uh, all suffer to some extent. Uh, and when we just think about the suffering, you know, of not really always filling out those lists, you know, of all, uh, not achieving this or that, you know, not being good enough for this or this competition or stuff like this, we uh, usually uh, accept the responsibility as a good boys and girls, you know, you know, as a good citizens, as a good employees, as a good students, blaming ourselves. Yeah. If only I blah 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 blah, blah would, would do more that or this, then uh, I would succeed. But are we so powerful to achieve all this that is uh, tantalizingly displayed before ourselves in all those self-help books, in all those uh, market visions of consumption, employment, and uh, uh, life, like in, I don't know, even IKEA catalog, my god. Even the IKEA catalog uh, is not uh, easily achievable, or not, not for many of us, at least here. Uh, we, are, we constantly feel that we are not so powerful as we should be. Um, and certainly, we are finding with every year, with every, uh, okay, in academic sense, semester, or with every uh, week, week or month, um, that we are not so successful as we should be. This also adds to our common life distress. So, uh, what to do? What to do with those facts? What to do with those facts without all the circus of self-blaming, of uh, constant, never-ending self-change? Uh, that um, uh, all enervates and uh, exhausts us, like those Sisyphuses, no? from uh, Gustave Dore, um, uh, illustrations to Dante's Inferno. Uh, how to step out of this inferno? The thing is um, that uh, ancient Stoicism was um, dealing exactly with the same situation in ancient world. Yeah? The usual uh, very stable, yes, social, economic, or political worlds were collapsing, yeah, where they were changing. Uh, there were no certainty of who we are, of who other are, uh, of what to do, and so on and so on, how to live. So, the basic existential question that Stoicism poses to us, and it's still very valid today, I would claim, is what is exactly in our conscious will to do? And we, if we begin to consider this question, we will see that it's not such a big, all-expanding and over-taxing uh, list of things that we actually can volitionally, uh, consciously affect in our life. We should then start uh, to a um, uh, little bit relax demands on ourselves. And this is the main point that uh, ancient Stoics like Epictetus, first century um, uh, author, was uh, having. So his main book is called uh, uh, yeah, The Guide to Good Life, and Heridion to Kalubiu. Uh, I hope you will uh, be having uh, interest after uh, this in reading that, or about it at least. But I see that uh, I am stepping my... Um, mm, um, time uh, limits, so let me finish. Uh, my suggestion is, just accept this question, at least for a while, my dear friends. What is actually up to us? What is up to us as individuals? What is up to us as social uh, units, social circles, circles of friends, circles of colleagues? What can we really change? And we, what can, as, at least as persons, we really cannot? We cannot, what we cannot change and cannot affect, uh, Stoics were always suggesting um, uh, to build uh, ourselves a, a rational distance with that, you know, and to count it as a really ethically not important thing. So many things that the market pushes among, uh, to us are really not that important in Stoic perspective. Um, 
so my suggestion would be to get interested in Stoicism, uh, uh, consider it as a, a modern kind of interpersonal culture of uh, human resilience against uh, uh, present day very demanding uh, institutions uh, and um, just begin to discover what is meaningful to us as a person and f groups of friends, groups of collaborators, social, uh, socially tied groups. This is much more important than to overload and overtax ourselves with never-ending lists of you should do this or you should do that. Thank you very much. Um, I hope that you will be uh, modern stoic heroes. Thank you.